Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Neat diary today by Jan. He looks at phishing sites and how to identify them. One trick here is the use of specific FAF icons. The favorite icon that's often displayed as part of the URL in a web browser. Of course, to make a phishing site plausible, this icon is copied from the original site. And well, Shodan actually allows you to search for specific icons. And Jan also included a link to a GitHub project that tracks uh, different hashes uh, for uh, popular uh, FAF icons. Now, the hash being used here is a murmur hash. It's uh, not a cryptographic hash. The goal here is not really uh, to uh, be secure in a sense to make it difficult to reverse the hash, but really just have an efficient uh, lookup method for uh, these uh, images. Back in February, Nagios, uh, the network monitoring tool, patched an OS command injection vulnerability that's actually, well, uh, fairly easy to exploit. All you have to do is more or less add the command you would like uh, to execute to a specific URL. And Unit 42, the Palo Alto research team, is uh, now reporting that they see uh, this vulnerability actively exploited to install crypto coin miners. And please don't forget, because this is a very easy to exploit vulnerability, these crypto coin miners are probably just the tip of the iceberg. There's uh, probably a bunch of other stuff that's uh, being uh, done uh, using uh, this particular vulnerability. Nagios sort of being able to connect to a lot of systems in the network, often being also allowed to execute commands on other systems on the network is certainly a fairly juicy target and something an attacker could easily leverage uh, to uh, get access to large parts of a network. And Trend Micro is reporting about a new uh, version of the XCS set malware. Uh, this uh, malware came originally up in August last year, and it is targeting uh, Mac OS developers. It is distributed as an Xcode project, and uh, by essentially using that project, the developer's machine uh, can be compromised. Trend Micro now found some updated versions of uh, XCS set and in particular versions that uh, target Mac OS 11 Big Sur, which uh, had not been released when the original version came out and also the M1 uh, processor. Of course, uh, developers are likely going uh, to uh, use M1 machines in order uh, to adapt software for uh, this new architecture. So it sort of makes sense for the attackers uh, to follow developers here uh, to uh, this uh, new architecture. Some other uh, changes include plugins for Safari 14 in order uh, to uh, get some persistence on the system. And this version also includes updated icons uh, to better fit in with the new theme of uh, macOS uh, Big Sur. And we got uh, new updates from QNAP for its uh, network storage uh, device. Probably the most uh, critical one here is a command injection vulnerability in QTS and QUTS Hero. Uh, this is essentially uh, the admin interface uh, for uh, these uh, devices. Also some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and a SQL injection vulnerability in the multimedia console. As I've said before, with these devices, do not expose them to the internet. And also, if possible, uninstall any of these little apps that you don't actually need. And finally, for anybody using Juniper devices, Juniper actually recently uh, did publish a whole list of updates for JunoS, the operating system that Juniper uses most recently, vulnerabilities that could lead to a denial of service, but uh, also one that uh, could be used to bypass firewall rules. Now, I believe that this is really more affecting the loopback interface, so uh, not sure how exploitable uh, that is. But uh, you may want to double check that you're up to date with your Juniper devices. 
And well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.